You have a big idea you want to communicate. It may be a result, an outcome, or a conclusion. Maybe it's an insight that you want to share, or a recommendation that you need to make. How can you communicate your idea with the maximum impact? The mistake that too many people make is that they dive straight into the details. Or maybe they tell a story. We did this, we spoke to that person, we found out that. But in a business or project presentation, people don't want a story. They just want the good stuff. And not just that, they want it now. So bluff. Bottom line, up front. The best approach starts with your key message. You might want to give a short introduction, but you certainly don't need to dive in with the details. Get your key message quickly. If you do have a short introduction, here's how to structure it. First, state the context or background quickly. Then, Develop that with the new information, the findings, the complication, the facts that lead you to your key message. And then set up your big idea. Something like a rhetorical question works well. So what did we conclude? Or what do we learn from this? Then state your key message. State it clearly. State it succinctly. And state it without unnecessary jargon. Once you've stated your big idea, then you can elaborate. And our elaboration is likely to depend upon what question either the audience is likely to ask or you want them to have asked so that you can answer it. And the two obvious questions are why? How do you justify this conclusion, this recommendation, this decision? Or how? How are we going to implement your recommendation, your conclusion, or your decision? Just as a work breakdown structure will have a key line, so too will your elaboration upon your big idea. Let's take the two examples of a key line that answers the question why, and a key line that answers the question how. If you're going to answer the question why, you need to do so in a succinct manner. Keep the number of reasons to a maximum of three. In fact, there is a good argument that suggests that three is the right number, both the maximum and the minimum. However, three as a maximum is imperative. Think about times when someone has told you there are tens of really good reasons. And they're going through reason one, two, three, four, five. And when they get to reason nine, reason 10, reason 11, these aren't great reasons, but you've forgotten the first two or three. And now in your mind, this lame reason number nine is probably like all of the other reasons. Curiously, the more reasons you give, the more subsequent reasons diminish the impact and the assertiveness of your reasoning for your recommendation, for your decision, for your insight. And three is a magic number. In many languages, giving three reasons or a list of three things has significant power. Yes, there will be other reasons sometimes, but relegate those to an appendix, to a document, or let smaller minded people be the ones who contribute the additional reasons while you focus on the big, important three reasons to justify your big idea. And the way to do this is to tell your audience that there are three reasons that you will discuss. You then discuss reason one, then remind them that there are three reasons and move on to reason number two. Discuss that. Remind them of reason one and two, and then discuss reason number three. But what if you want to discuss the how question? This is about process. And whilst three is a magic number, 
it's often going to be the case that you can't reasonably boil the process down to three steps. Here, the magic number is seven plus or minus two. George Miller, the psychologist, tells us that the average person can remember seven plus or minus two items in a list. Now, my preference is to recognize that whilst seven is a decent average, there are almost certainly never going to be very many people in your audience that can remember eight and nine. And there will be some that will struggle to remember six and seven. So make five your working maximum number of steps. But what if there are more than five steps to the process? Well, this depends on whether you want people to remember what you're saying and also the format. If it's a long form format and people can take notes and memory isn't important, then it's fine to have as many steps as you need. But if you want people to remember the steps, if you want the steps to have real impact, then keep it to an absolute maximum of five. And then if you've got for the sake of argument, 10 or 12 steps, cluster them. Step one may have a number of sub steps in it. That way you can have a process of up to 25 discrete steps shown as a five step process. What if you need to address both the why and the how question? Well, the simple answer is always start with the why question. And the reason is simple. If you don't answer the why question, then people aren't going to pay attention to the how because they're not yet convinced that what you're describing how to do is the right thing to do. The other thing you may want to address after you've discussed the why or the how or both is the what if. What if is about risk. It's about scenarios. Here you are both warning people about what could go wrong and also anticipating their objections. By anticipating their objections, you're able to diffuse any resistance. Two final tips that I would offer to help you to communicate with impact. And the first is to avoid jargon language as much as you possibly can. Never assume that your whole audience knows the jargon language unless you are absolutely certain. Always start with simple, plain language. And if you do choose to introduce jargon words, define them carefully before introducing the word itself. And secondly, keep your explanations simple so that any intelligent person in the audience can understand it without having specialist knowledge. You, as the project manager, have what is called the curse of knowledge. You know so much, it's easy to forget that some people that you're addressing don't have as much knowledge as you. And if you talk about things they don't fully understand and you don't make sure that they do fully understand it, they may trust that you understand it, but they will never trust you. The most important thing you can do is to make people feel smart. When they think they understand it, then they know that you do. So the secret to effective high impact communication on projects is the pyramid approach. Start with a big idea, then a key line of three or maybe four or five items to either justify or describe your big idea. And then underneath that, we can elaborate on the key line with the additional detail. Please do smash that like button if you've enjoyed this video. I'll be making loads more great project management content for you. So please do subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of it. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.